it's so nice to be here in your studio. And I was curious, we've talked a, a little bit about communication and, and listening and audiences. And these days, everyone seems to be plugged into their phone. And I think sometimes you have to, and the irony is, is that we're putting this on Facebook and, and on blogs, but the irony of, of, I think people should maybe step away from the phone and actually listen, not only to one another, but when they go in the concert hall, not worry about email. And I'm curious, because I'm sure you probably have communications with record companies, management, orchestras, conductors, soloists, all sorts of ways. But it, for you, does it, at some point it's like, no, I need a day that I just want to compose, or I just need a day where I'm just going to read and recite poetry. Are, are, do you have those days where you just want to be away from uh, the electronics? I think it's an interesting question because, um, you know, the, the sort of um, uh, business that gets accomplished just, just by, by being able to email and being able to have email on your phone and being able to, you know, be on all these social networking things is... I mean, it, I don't think can be underestimated. I mean, I can't imagine a world in which, you know, you would have to courier service something or, you know, uh, call a landline and hope you catch someone and, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, of course it's, it's way too early to understand what the long-term ramifications of this is going to be, uh, are going to be in terms of, you know, human communication and understanding. Um, and I think that because it's so new, I mean, it's so new. It's it's a it's a development of the last you know half century that that we um, have all these methods uh, of communication. I think the more vital issue, and of course, you know, you do need to step away, and you do. I mean, it, it's always just been the case that you have to take a break from time to time. But um, it doesn't matter whether you're you know. Beethoven ended every night with a cigar and a beer, you know, and, and so I, you know, I think it, it doesn't matter how disciplined you are in your working routine, you do have to get away from work from time to time. Um, but I think the, the bigger issue is, is um, that we're at this very crepuscular and important moment in human history because of this, partially because, in large part because of this, not only because I can com not only because if you and I decided that we wanted to go to Tokyo and have the best sushi at my favorite sushi place in the world, um, we could be there in 16 hours, and we could be doing we could be doing this, you know, 17 hours. Um, we could go anywhere, point A to point B in the world, in less than 24 hours. Uh, the the issue is, and, and the, we can also communicate with anyone in Tokyo or Dubai or Paris or anywhere I instantly. I mean, and there's five different ways of doing it. So the human race actually has become, it has been pushed into much closer quarters. Um, and at the same time, our um, emphasis on, on the arts and on, therefore, human communication and understanding and the quality of the way that we speak to one another and we're spoken to has deteriorated. Um, and, and so we're in a very interesting, we're in a very interesting place. And coincidentally, we also have the capacity to destroy the entire world in less than an hour. So um, we're at this very, very, tumu a very tumultuous moment. And I think that it's a great opportu opportunity. Um, I don't think we're taking advantage of the opportunity now. Uh, but if we learn one another's arts and we emphasize one another's arts it's that much more difficult to dehumanize the other. If I know Seamus Heaney's poetry, I, uh, I know Auden's poetry, I know, you know what came out of the Troubles in Ireland, I have a better understanding of, of, of that. Uh, you know, uh, it's, you, you love Arabic music. It's so much harder to dehumanize someone if you know their art. Uh, so if we start to emphasize this, um, it would be it would be not only great but I think vital to our survival and to the way that we communicate with one another. So it's not about two hundred email. I mean, email, Twitter, all of that stuff is great. I mean, Twitter. Some of the most profound tweets that came out of the the um, uh, Tahrir Square uprisings brought down a dictatorship that lasted thirty plus years. Um, so it's not to be deri you don't deride these things, but. Um, hopefully use them for, for good rather than for bad. And I think that, um, I, I think that we're at this pro profound moment of opportunity because we, if we take advantage of this, 
um, we could have, with the help of all of this communications technology and, and, and we could have the greatest renaissance and the greatest period of peace that we've ever known and the pros prosperity and, and, and creative sharing and all of these things. Um, conversely, if we, if we screw this one up, we're really screwed. Um, so it's it's um, it's a it's a very interesting, a very. I mean, it seems like a simple question, but it's actually a very complicated, multi-layered question, and um, that would be my that would be my uh, response to it. It's not about the form; it's about what you do with it. Yeah. Well, it's great to talk to you, and we're happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs>